Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kramer, Professor of Entrepreneurship at Vinh University in Ocean Park outside of Hanoi, Vietnam. Today is the launch of a new Asian-focused entrepreneurship podcast called Asian Founders and Funders, whose mission is to expose the world to all the great entrepreneurs and funders throughout Asia. Today's guest is Tam Nguyen, who is the CEO of Speak Lab and Snap Picks, and is a junior at Vin University and is also the one who developed our website. She's a very talented young lady. Tam, welcome. Thank you, uh, Professor Mark, for having me on your show. Well, I'm thrilled to have you. So, Tam, let's start off with this. Um, why did you become an entrepreneur? Um, I think it's a pretty long story. Uh, I think a lot of people, uh, not not even me, uh, would would like would expect that I would someday become an entrepreneur because uh, throughout all of my my twelve years of my schooling, from um, primary school to high school, I had always been like the academic kid kid in the class. So I would always, uh, if you found me, uh, you would find me always be studying uh, subjects on class. And uh, I, like, I, I was kind of like a nerd um, that, like, that was pretty shy and uh, all that. So um, uh, I think, uh, but I think like um, throughout my uh, early years, that spirit for starting up has been, uh, nurtured in me uh it's not that clear yet but i remember like uh the when i was young i have always wanted to build something create something and show it to other people like when i uh, was little my favorite hobby was to uh create handmade stuff so because uh, my parents didn't have the money to buy me toys i would be like take the paper I, I would take the paper and like the things that I can find found in my uh, house to make toys for myself. And then when I got um, a little bit older, I would be uh, creating more advanced stuff. For example, I remember uh, when I was uh, in uh, seventh grade, uh, I uh, my my friends would uh, have the money to buy beautiful notebook covers. So they the, the covers um, that have been printed. Uh, and and they, they they can buy them and uh, pack then like cover their notebooks with all those beautiful um, things uh, like pictures and stuff. But I, I I couldn't ask my parents to to buy me that. So what I uh, decided to do was that I uh, I draw I draw uh, the like I I I draw all I think thirty no notebook covers by myself. And I, I use that to like cover my, my notebooks. And then that uh, I got famous in my school because of that, because uh, my drawings uh, were pretty beautiful and people start wanted to start wanting to buy, uh, to buy the covers. They like, asked ask me to draw for them and they, got, they would buy me for that. And, and since that, I, I realized that I, I have something that I can sell to people and people can pay me and I can use the money to do to buy things I want and then uh, my I think my official first uh, startup would be when I was 13 years old uh, I uh, I made a small I created a small business uh, in my summer time with my sister uh, the well, what we sell was that we uh, uh, sold uh, uh, some keychains from uh, uh, fabrics, a uh, type of fabric. Uh, I, I didn't know how to how to say it in uh, English, but uh, there's um, uh, but we sold all these uh, all these cute keychains with uh, with different shapes like uh, lemon or uh, watermelon or animals and stuff, and we just sell them for uh, only like uh, two to ten thousand down for each. So that's around like. Um, less than a uh, 100 cents to uh 200 cents i think i guess in uh, so a dollar to two dollars yeah uh yeah but no not not uh like 0 0.5 less than 0 0.5 dollars for each okay well when i was small like but when i was small that was a huge money for me because uh, because uh, like my, my parents didn't even like give me that much money so uh, that summer we started that business and we we sold over like uh, five hundred thousand down. So that is a wow. Uh, two one that that is around two hundred 
two hundred dollars. Like two, no, no, not two hundred dollars. Fifty dollars, yeah, fifty dollars. Right, fifty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was like a huge fortune for me at that point. Uh, but then the problem is, um, uh, like, uh, when I got back to uh, school, school, I prioritized my studies more. So I shut out the the business and just kept on, uh, studying. So, uh, I I think, um. And I, I I started some small businesses when I got to uh, my uh, uh, high school too. But mm, like the the problem for me at that point was that I I like uh, because I was affected a lot by the mindset of uh, Vietnamese parents and people that like uh, we if you are in high, in school you need to study and like study is your primary focus and all other things are secondary. So so I abandon my businesses but little did i know like these businesses are like when, when i'm look i look back these businesses are what like i'm really proud of when i thinking back about my childhood and how those little things that have contributed in like have instilled in me the the like the spirit of entrepreneurship and uh i think um uh then when I got uh, like the turning point for me to got, get started with uh, entrepreneurship in the technology field was when I got to university, which is Vin University, uh, uh, where where you taught. Um, I I uh, uh, at first I I didn't know anything about technology uh, and software engineering um, and all those things. I was I was like the least tech no not least tech savvy, but I was. I was very scared of the coding, programming, and stuff. Like I couldn't understand them because you know my background was in social sciences. I specialized. I, I was specialized in social sciences, uh, Vietnamese literature when I was uh, in uh, secondary school and high school. So all I do was writing, write, like write, write words, not wrote those uh, like rigid words uh, on uh, by coding. Uh, but then uh, I'm uh, in uh, in university. I got to meet the students who study computer science and uh, engineering from the College of Engineering and Computer Sciences from Yupin University. And by talking to them, I got to uh, know more, understand more about what they're doing and uh, and like the possibilities and the beauty of uh, software engineering. And then uh, I met my business partner. Uh, you have known him. But I think I can. Um, he's um, a very talented um, engineer. You can tell him. And uh, yeah, you can tell us his name. Uh, yeah, um, his name is Dong, and uh, he's uh, he's a very uh, talented engineer. And but uh, we we got like close to each other very quick because we share uh, that spirit in entrepreneurship and we talk uh, like when, when we first met we talk about a lot of things we talk about all those business ideas that we are interested in and that we can do together and then uh at at the like the second semester of uh of um of my university study we decided that we must start up because if we don't do now like when will we when will we do it like I, so uh but, Although we didn't know anything about startup yet, we didn't know anything about fundraising or handling um, uh, marketing or human resources uh, yet. But we think if we didn't start, uh, then then we ca couldn't learn. So uh, uh, we uh, we we started uh, we started our first our first startup, Speak Lab, uh, at uh, at that that summer that summer, and uh, so uh, since that uh, because. Yeah. So it, it uh, fast forward to now. It has been it it has been just a little over one year since I started uh, my startup, and then since then I have uh, started two other products, my pal and Snap, as you said. And uh, I the journey. I think I would have a lot to share throughout this journey because yeah, a lot of things have happened, and a lot of I have changed a lot compared to last year. Uh, so. Uh, I think it was a very uh, beautiful journey now that I look back and I'm also very excited for the so, journey ahead of me too. So let me ask you, are, what do your parents do? Are they, they entrepreneurs themselves? Uh, actually, um, 
I think uh, I can share a little bit of, more about my background. So my uh, my I wasn't born in a very in the uh, in a uh, I don't know. Um, so I think like my parents they were uh, not not like not good students or not like either successful uh, people. Uh, in uh, uh, in uh, people's perspective, they didn't even finish their secondary school. So they 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 they, they didn't have the secondary graduation um, certificate yet. Um, they uh, only work as uh, blue um, blue collar workers their whole life. And uh, my uh, and my family that my parents have four kids, including me. I was I'm uh, the second oldest. Uh, uh, kid, uh, so uh, my our life financially uh, has been uh, pretty challenging, especially when I was young. Uh, my parents, uh, like my parents, the total income of my parents uh, didn't even equal to the average uh, income, like not the uh, the the, the uh, like income uh, the av the average income of a uh, of a of an individual in Vietnam, the the income level that would require them to start paying personal income tax. So, like that, that there's a level in Vietnam. I think. So you I didn't let young, that, that stop was... you. So you didn't let that stop you. Yeah. I mean, that that yeah. didn't d discourage you. You didn't think that you couldn't um, wish for and um, go for more uh, just because that your parents didn't come from a wealthy background or a highly educated background. Your parents are humble people who work hard and you come from a family of uh, four children. So none of that stopped you. In fact, it probably encouraged your entrepreneurship so you could afford buy the things you'd like to buy, right? And have the things, because you told us about making your own toys and your book covers and everything. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I think like my Actually, there are uh, there were some points in in my life that I I was uh, kind of sad <laughs> when I went and and feel like inferior when I look at when I I look at my financial background. Uh, but he, here's the thing: like I think uh, if I can overcome all these challenges and still accomplish the things that I would I would I want, then that would be way more rewarding. Uh, compared to when I have all the things, all the resources. So like my when uh, when I still remember when I was young, when I was like very 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 young, five to six years old, I have seen my parents um, struggling financially, and I have seen them like um, arguing with each other every night when we got went to sleep, just because they didn't have the money for tomorrow and stuff. And then at that moment, I have always told myself that I have to. Um, like um, make I, I have to try my best to help my family to uh, live a better life, and I I, I wanted um, to make my parents happy because if they are already like when I when I was studying in the classroom, I always thought about my parents out there working very hard, and if they are working, if they were working that hard out there, like, and I'm I'm here like you know like good environment with all air conditioner and stuff, I need to study harder. So um, that is the mo motivation for me to study very hard. Like uh, when throughout my my schooling and uh, and and, I, and actually I, I have always been the best student in the class too. So that's that's what, what, uh, what that's made you choose. What made you choose Vin University? Um, I yeah, I think uh, like because uh, my my parents couldn't afford. Uh, my tuition fee, whatever school is, you know, um, my, you know, I stopped, uh, my parents stopped paying, uh, paying for me, for my bills, my education bills and living expenses when I got to high school. So because I got to the only gifted high school in the city and uh, that that school is the was the only one in my city that didn't have tuition fee. So my, my parents cannot, well, like they, they don't, didn't have to worry about my tuition fee. And then uh, when I got to my high school, I also, I was a pretty good student. So I started to taking like to tutoring other kids to get money to pay for my living expenses. So I stopped asking for uh, the living expenses from my parents too. And then uh, for uh, the, the same with, uh, when I like think about what schools to, 
choose for my university, my top one priority uh, criteria is always uh, full scholarship. I want, I need to have full scholarships to study. So, uh, Bin University was one of the three uh, universities that gave me the full scholarship. I have uh, two other choices in the U.S., but uh, at that point, I felt like I wasn't ready to uh, uh, to go to the U.S. Uh, yet. Uh, honestly, because uh, the uh, because the schools uh, those schools didn't have the diverse academic offerings that I would want to study. Uh, that's one thing. And another thing is that my parents were no longer young now. So I, I, I wanted to uh, study somewhere near them so that I, I can like get back to them and uh, see them uh, regularly. So that's why I decided to join Vin University. Uh, because they they gave, gave gave me the full ride scholarship. That's one thing, and because they are uh, in right in Vietnam, very close to my hometown, so I can uh, visit my parents uh, whenever I want. Wonderful. So let's talk about your businesses. Talk about each of your businesses and why you started uh, those businesses. Um, yeah, uh, I, I have shared with you all about my first official business when I was 13 years old. Now, my, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, but that is a very small business. I wouldn't consider it a startup. Well, I mean, your two but, current uh, the, businesses, but your two current businesses, yeah. talk about those and yeah. how you started them and why you launched them. Yeah, the first uh, business, uh, the, the first startup I started was Speak, it's Big Lab. Uh, so it's a, um, it's a software that can allow students to uh, practice their um, language speaking skills, get feedback, and th they can also engage in like real time conversations with our AI, just like a real person uh, to chat with uh, chat with them and practice their conversational skills too. So you can try it now at speaklab.space if you would like. Um, and the reason uh, why I started Speak Lab was very simple. It started from my own story. So because my, as you guys know, my parents didn't have the money to uh, to allow to afford like expensive resources for my education, um, including English. Um, so when I was uh, in high school, all my friends they have they their, their parents um gave them uh the, the parents i uh, bought the expensive courses from english centers um to for, for them to uh, improve their english skills but for me i couldn't ask my parents for the money so i decided to self uh, self learn uh english on my own um it was a tough uh it was pretty tough actually because uh, although for reading and listening, I can went online, I could go online and like watch videos or read articles, but for speaking and writing, I all for speaking, for example, I always need somebody to talk to me, give me feedback, and I, I, I need to see their responses, whether I'm, I'm like, I'm talking the right way, or I'm, res uh, I'm responding meaningfully to their questions. But I didn't have that kind of speaking partner uh, when I was, uh, when I self-learned English. The, the only partner I had was my roommate who, but whose English speaking skills were, were, not, were not even as good as me. So it's, it's pretty hard. Uh, so, uh, and, uh, but yeah, but eventually, uh, some, uh, because I've, the, the way I practice, speaking uh, at that point was to look at the mirror or uh, just uh, look at the camera and talk to it and uh, and just hope that my English would improve over time. It did improve, but I think it was a painful process. So uh, when I uh, uh, when I talked to my co-founder, uh, I we, we thought uh, he also had a similar experience. And uh, we thought that if we can use to utilize the power of AI to help people practice uh, English speaking skills, even if they didn't have, uh, an, uh, don't have a native speaker to practice with, or don't have a tutor, a one-on-one -on -one tutor to give feedback to them, then that would be very wonderful. And my co-founder, uh, Tung, is a very good engineer and he is, he is, he was capable of building the product. So that's why we, we decided to implement this 
uh, this uh, product right away. And uh, that's how I started Speak Lab. Uh, but now, uh, the Sp uh, although uh, Speak Lab has encountered a lot of challenges along the way, we have reached a point where we started um, like making profits. So uh, I'm also venturing into other uh, business um, opportunities. And one of that is um, Snap. So uh, Snap uh, is um, like Snap. Uh, the story with Snap uh, would come from my, uh, my skill set background. So I started uh, doing graphic design when I was in uh, uh, grade seven. Uh, because uh, you know, it, it's a very fun story that I can now share with you later. Uh, but uh, I started doing graphic design back then. So up to now, it has been, I think, uh, uh, nearly 10 years. And <laughs> it's pretty long. But yeah, uh, then and then uh, the problem is that gra graphic design has always a pain point for all the organizations I have worked with because always because like they always struggle with fight, fighting a graphic designer. Uh, and uh, also the process of designing things uh, is pretty long. And, uh, and yeah, and, uh, and, and because they are short on the human uh, resources, that is, so the, the time it took for uh, the graphic designs to be ready is even, uh, uh, is even higher. And this is a, a serious problem for content creators. Uh, for, um, because they need to produce content uh, regularly, sometimes it's daily. Uh, they all, uh, but if, when they have the ideas in their mind, they cannot instantly share it online. It would take time for them to write them down or uh, rewrite them, check the mistakes and all, and, uh, and de design them into the posts that they can share online. And that is a very long process. I, I used to be a content creator, to, so so I understand how long, how painful it is. Um, so I decided to make Snap. The idea of Snap is that we also use AI to uh, understand your input. Your input can be uh, by speaking out loud your ideas or by chat down your ideas, or uh, you may share a YouTube link or a website link, and then we will transform your input into carousel posts. Um, with both content and designs ready, and you can just download them and post on your social media. So on average, it will only take you like two minutes to uh, make a post. As long as you have the ideas in your mind, you can always like share it, uh, share it to your online audience very quickly. So uh, uh, that's like the first uh, niche we are targeting as Snap. In the future, we may uh, exploring other use cases for Snap too. Like we we may explore like how Snap can be helpful in other um, use cases. So, but now basically that's it for now. We I have only started Snap for around three weeks, so it's uh, still pretty young. So, when you were starting these businesses, did you write a business plan and did you raise any money, or did you just you and your partner got together and said this is a good idea and just started programming? So. What, what was the process you went through to think through the, your yeah. idea, get it off the ground? Uh, for the first product, Speak Lab, uh, I would say it was uh, like we made a lot of mistakes when we started it because it was our first time being a startup founder. Uh, we we didn't have a very clear business plan. We didn't we 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 didn't like we. We just hired people very blindly. So if, if anyone is uh, interested, we would uh, take them all in. We didn't have a clear guideline of how of who to hire, um, and then we also didn't have a clear plan of how we will build the product and how to market the product to our customers. We didn't even have we didn't even like understand clearly who are our customers. So there are we met make. We made a lot of mistakes with our first startup. It was pretty messy uh, in the first few months when it started, but then eventually we have uh, like learned from our failures and our mistakes. And in uh, in the second uh, in the second uh, startup of mine, uh, Snap, everything uh, we I, I think the process is much clearer for us. Um, so for uh, my team, our uh, we. Uh, 
our competitive advantage, I would say, is that we can build products very, very fast. So uh, for example, um, like our, uh, the, the Snap app, we can, if we have the idea, we can quickly code it all in around two to three days to make it started. So um, we understand that is a very like wonderful strength of us. Like we know other startup teams, they often take around three months to just do the MVP, but we it's it's only days. So so uh, we uh, our our strategy was to make to build a, an MVP very quick and then introduce it to our potential customers, pitch to them and see how they respond. And we try to have our first. 10 paying users uh, to validate um, that there is indeed a demand for this product. And then we, uh, um, and then we continue like investing more time to improve the product. Uh, but yeah, compared to when I started Spikla, now I think um, we are like more, we, I think the change is that we care more about our customers. Like at, now when we, we, we started Spikla, we are distracted by a lot of things. Like we, we want to have a very uh, uh, like um, influential launch, a product launch and stuff. But now with uh, our priority now, when started Snap is to find the right customers and serve them the best, uh, the best that we can. And uh, gradually uh, I, we think that if uh, we can bring the most value to our customers, then the, then the value we get back would be higher uh, so uh, we try to understand our customers more i the the problem their problem um, the solution we can bring them help them to um to grow like uh, to to solve the problem and uh, and yeah so i think it's a uh, the biggest change uh, com when i started snap compared to uh, when i started speak lab so what, what did you learn from the mistakes in Speak Lab that helped you with this? And the second part is um, you're able to develop things fast, but how are you going to scale up? Let's say um, from this interview, you have 100 companies now want to use your new product. How fast can you scale? So first, let's talk about what's the mistakes. Uh, you may you don't have to list all of them, but what did you learn from the mistakes that helped you uh, improve for this second venture? Yeah, uh, I made a lot of mistakes, but I think uh, I will uh, I will share like the top three mistakes that I make. I think the first mistake is that I hire the wrong people for the team. Uh, when I started Speak Lab, I thought that the the more the merrier, like the the more people the better. Uh, and then I just hire whoever is interested in our startup. I didn't ask them uh, or, or I didn't find out more about their motivation behind they wanting to join our startup. I didn't ask about their like their insights, their industry insights or their practical experience. Uh, so that resulted in the fact that like after a while of running Speak Lab, I, rec like, I recognized that a lot of my employees, they had very bad performance very very bad like they they didn't proactively um, do their work they didn't have like good commitment for the work they always wait for my reminders or wait for my push to start doing things and that's when i realized i have i have hired uh, wrong people for the job and uh, uh and that so for so for my uh Later, like I, I just uh, uh, let, um, I just say goodbye to all these people and just retain the people who are um, mo like who are the most fit, the right fit for the startup. Later in my second startup, uh, Speak Lab, I didn't hire them. Uh, didn't hire anyone like too blindly. So I own. I own. I only uh, like started hiring when I feel like a need to scale the team, to scale the product or to grow. So uh, uh, for now, the team is very lean. For now, Snap has only two, two co-founders. We, uh, we haven't hired any, but if we are to, uh, if, 
if we find the need to uh, hire someone to do more things to boost our business performance, then I I will uh, be very careful in my picks. I will uh, try to understand their motivation, their industry insights, their skill sets, and to determine whether they are right, the right fit for the team. So that would be the one thing uh, for hiring hiring people. The one mistake. Uh, the second mistake of me uh, I, was uh, that I didn't know uh, anything about the product because, as I told you, uh, I was a business. I, I am a business student. I ma I'm majoring in business administration uh, at university. And uh, when I started uh, Speak Lab, I didn't know anything about programming, coding, or uh, technology or software engineering. I didn't know how a software works or how to build a software. That's why it's very hard for me to control and communicate with the uh, technical team in my startup. I didn't understand what they are doing. And I'm, I just blindly follow what they told me. I couldn't verify. I, I couldn't like uh, tell them, uh, I, I couldn't like um, determine whether they are doing right or wrong or they uh, or they need to, yeah, I so it's it's very hard for me to control as the leader to control like the the performance and the progress of the technical team. So that's why I have changed uh, compared to when I started speak lab. Now I have learned uh, to code so I could, I have learned uh, software engineering and now I was able to uh, call, uh, I'm, I'm the coder, I'm the software engineer for Snap. Uh, I, I built the whole website uh, myself. So now that I have no, learned to code, I know coding, no one can, uh, no, no, like, it's easier for me to communicate technical and product related problems with the technical team because now I, understand what they're talking about i can verify whether they are uh say like the, the things they are saying is um are reasonable or not or whether their progress is good or bad uh, i i have i know how to benchmark the progress you know so i think uh, that the sec that's the second mistake like didn't know about product problem while i think for startups a uh, product is like um, it, it's very important because if I cannot understand the product, how can I uh, market that product to people or how can I like sell that product uh, to, to my customers or how can I even provide a reasonable pricing uh, scheme for, for that product. So that is uh, the second mistake. And uh, the third mistake I would say is to uh, have a too low, uh, too low of a standard uh, like my stand my working standard uh, back then are pretty low and uh, uh, I have uh, uh, I I would say like uh, when I first started I I, I thought that uh, my the way uh, I, I thought that my productivity and my work performance is pretty good because I I also started some extra uh, some clubs in my high school and I have operated them uh, pretty well. So I thought I thought that my skill sets and my uh, performance back then was good. But now, uh, but now, now I realize that it's uh, like the business performance and the ex expect the work expectations for a startup is much higher compared to when you are doing extracurricular activity at school. Like when when you're when you're doing extracurricular activity at school, it's because you're doing them for fun or for the learning or exploration purposes. And all of all of the people there are students. So they didn't have they didn't have like high standards and uh, they are not worried about the results uh, much. So their their working standards are pretty low. But now uh, when it comes to a startup, because our utmost priority is to uh, generate revenue and uh, help people like make money from what they are doing. Um, like the, we are much more result oriented and, and uh, yeah, and we are worried uh, and we always pressured by the results. So that, that's why uh, our working standards are also a lot higher. And uh, I, I, I used to be overconfident about my, my, my working standards until I, uh, 
I, I did my startup. Now, I think compared to when I started, my productivity is like 10x compared to when I started Speak Lab. Like when, when I started Speak Lab, you know, even small things like uh, writing an email or uh, writing a post on so social media used to be something that it takes me like one hour to do. Uh, I, I thought them uh, to be like very heavy tasks, but now uh, I, I, my, my, um, uh, I would say my uh, uh, model now is that I need to get things done quickly and lean uh, so that I can get more things done in a given time. So uh, I, uh, I stop being too perfectionist about whatever I do and I, I will prior prioritize do things fast uh, and do more things. So um, uh, as a result, the, my, uh, the overall business performance of my startups are higher compared to when, when I was like, very slow with the tasks I do. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons why I really admire you. When, <laughs> because because uh, like, when I see your podcast, The Best Business Minds, and this podcast, Asian Fathers and Funders, I saw that you, although that you have some like assistance to do some small tasks, like uploading on YouTube, SoundCloud and stuff. But the thing is, you, you, you done all of this, like you run the startup, uh, no, you, you don't run the podcast by yourself. Like you, you reach out to the, the speakers, you take care of the speakers, you uh, open the Zoom link, operate the whole room, you send the registration link, uh, promote them on social media and stuff. And, and you have been so consistent with the podcast that you have made 160 podcasts since uh, like since 2020 and that was like very impressive to me because you know to be honest when i see some uh, friends at my age right now um if they are to run a podcast like you they will require a team of like 30 40 people just to run a podcast like you and and i think like it would be that's because like they didn't um, like that, that would be like a waste of resources. To be honest, if if we know how to optimize our time, opt optimize our work efficiency, we can do way more things in way less time. And that's like I think that's how you are able to run your podcast and do a lot more things. And 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 you're you're still fine with it. Like you you teach, you taught at the uni, and you did uh, even did interview uh, do interviews for the incoming students and all that. And yeah, and that's that's what like your work, uh, your working standards, working productivity is a uh, left me with a huge impression. Uh, you know, I'm very impressed with uh, how efficient and productive you are like, with Thank all you so the things you do. Thank you so much. I think like you, you have to be very disciplined and very focused and it, it, it requires a lot of hours. I mean, I work a lot of hours every week uh, to do it. I mean, yeah. I'm typically working like myself um, from about 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning till about 9, 10 o'clock at night. And I work six days a week, usually Sunday through Friday. So yeah. it, you know, there's no shortcut, right? In entrepreneurship, yeah. uh, it, it's a function of putting in time. There's no way you can be more efficient, you can get more stuff done, but there's always one more thing to do, right? Like there's never a time that you can say, oh, I'm done. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So how are you, how are you scaling up your business? And you also mentioned to me that you uh, have brought in a CEO, I think for the first business, the uh, Speak Lab business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, I think, uh, to be honest, I think, uh, me uh, and my uh, partner, Tung, we are pretty very, very good at building uh, products from scratch. So, like, uh, if it would be, uh, it would only take us like days to build from nothing to something to do a product that we can start selling. But to but to be able to scale the product and uh, to maybe thousands or hundreds of thousands of users, that requires a different set skill set. Uh, you know, uh, and so uh, our strategy for now is that if we have a business opportunity that we want to uh, grasp, 
we will uh, build the product like very quickly first. And that's our strength. And then uh, we will uh, run it by ourselves in the first, uh, uh, in the first like few months uh, until it reached a point of product market fit. And then we would hire a CEO uh, or a team to start scaling the, the business. And at that time, we would step down to be like just um, shareholders. Uh, in in the business to like oversee the company and uh, in general. So that's our strategy for now. View products, view many products, uh, test them out, uh, see how them work. If they work out, we will hire the CEO uh, to to continue running it and scaling it to uh, many more customers. Do you hire other people? Um, to work for you that have an entrepreneurial mindset, which is a theme at Vin University um, by the president, Mylan. Uh, Mylan, uh, do you focus on that uh, to have uh, bring on people who have an entrepreneurial mindset? And is that needed for when you're working in a startup as opposed to people who work in a large organization don't necessarily want to go and yeah. tackle all these different things because it's very stressful working in a startup yeah, and yeah. you have to be super organized yeah uh you are you're absolutely right like uh the startup mindset the entrepreneurship mindset is our like one of our top criteria when considering whether someone is a good fit for the team because you know uh that i uh, like well I, I I share I share with you about uh, the first startup Speak Lab when we hired a lot of people and a lot of them just didn't have uh just weren't willing weren't ready to do startup and they weren't like um ready to commit and to like go all in for the startup so that's why it didn't work out for Speak Lab and them uh, I think it's very cr crucial, especially for student startups like us to hire only the ones that are that have the will that have the willingness and the I, I would say bonus bonus to do startups because if you do startups there you there would be some sort of trade off uh, that you have to make. For example, you you wouldn't have uh, you would have to work uh, all all day like from the morning to late night sometimes you have to talk to customers at 1 a.m in the morning and you have still have to do it have to do it for or for example for me i i i when i did start up uh, it would uh, take a lot of my time so i could i didn't have that much time to study so that's why my grades wouldn't be as uh, as good as they were when uh, in my my first year at, at university and that's a trade-off I have to make um, I have to make um, and uh, I uh, there uh, an another trade-off I would say is to be poor <laughs> because uh, yeah of course you you should have some sort of a uh, uh, an in, emergency fund to take care of yourself but because when when you do start up the first the first few months or uh, the first few days or even months you wouldn't have any paying customers yet so you would like uh you would have no salary uh but but you should like uh you should uh make that trade off like uh, you should be okay with uh, living a little bit more frugal in a in a more frugal way uh, to have money to take care of yourself while running the startup. It's a very uh, painful um, and oh, and I think an another thing, another key element of the entrepreneurship mindset is that you will you need to do um, you to wear a lot of hats, you know, because the the startup team is small. Uh, you need to uh, be able to do marketing, to do sales. Sales. You need to uh, even have to code like me. Um, and uh, yeah, in a startup, there is just no specialization position. Like um, uh, for for example, I, I I build products, but I would have to also um, do marketing and sales, and that's perfectly fine for me because you you don't have many people. You should have wear. You should be able to wear a lot of hats, and you have to learn to do things quickly so that you can get more things done with your time. Um, so I think yeah, the entrepreneurship mindset is a very uh, important asset uh, when when we, when we look for 
uh, co-founders or founding members in our team. And I would say, to be honest, that entrepreneurship mindset is not is not that common in uh, in people, especially for students. I agree with you totally. H- how do you um, how do you market your current ventures now? And what if, and how do you do it in an efficient way that you're able to get to the right target market? Did you develop a marketing plan before you start marketing? Yeah, um, thank you for the question. The thing is that I, for, for uh, Speak Lab, it took us a long time, a, a long time uh, uh, to be able to figure out like how, what's the, uh, the, what's the right way to market our product. I think to be able to market a product well, the utmost, uh, the first thing we have to do is to understand our customers. So understand who they are, uh, where, where they are at, and all of those things, what are their problems? How are they, how are they solving the problem right now? And how our solution can help their life better? Like what kind of value we can bring to our customers? So we need to understand that very clearly uh, to be able to have the right marketing strategy uh, for Speak Lab, uh, because our focus is to help people practice English, uh, their English speaking skills. We figured that our target customers would be um, secondary and high school uh, students. Uh, uh, and, uh, and so uh, uh, we, we have a lot of, a lot of like, campaigns and stuff to target at this, uh, this group of people, but uh, our two uh, men taught two men campaigns that uh, that have like uh, also the two campaigns that brought us the most leads uh, are the first is uh, some uh, com- a campaign that we called speaking challenge. So on our uh, software, we have a space for people to over uh, to initiate a speaking challenge with a topic and everyone can join and they can uh, compete to go to the top uh, the top top ranking and they can get prizes so that uh, that kind of co- competition uh, encourage people to join uh, to join our software check it out and uh, that that uh, campaign has brought it in a lot more leads so that's uh, that's one way, uh, one way to market. Another way is to market through events. So we we uh, uh, we have been sponsoring for uh, events uh, that are relevant to our business. So because we are uh, focusing on English speaking skills, we will sponsor event that like a sp- a public speaking contest or a, a, an English competition or something, and we will give them. Uh, free uh, give them scholarships uh, for free to uh, to to give to their participants and uh, through those events like those events have gathered a group of people that are interested in in this in this like this problem this problem of learning English in general and speaking skills in uh, particular and when we give them the scholarships for the top top like top participants, uh, the other participants will hear about our product too, and will check us out. And then they may, uh, may they, they may buy our, our product. So uh, that so far, these are the two most successful campaigns uh, of our, uh, of our product speak lab, uh, we are also um, doing some other things. But yeah, but I think uh, it's it still started from like understanding how uh, who who your customers are and target to the right target. Um, for Snap, uh, what our customers are a little bit different. Our customers, uh, the the niche we are targeting at first are uh, con- individual content creators or the content creation teams um, from a small businesses or small teams. Uh, so we help them to uh, like boost their content production um, by just, yeah, by automating the, ri- the writing and designing part of their content production. So uh, uh, to be able to market to this product, our, uh, ac- actually for now, we still haven't got the uh, enough like uh, the 10 first paying users yet. We are still uh, aiming for that goal, but our strategy for now is to actively reach out to these people. 
So because the content creators, they are very uh, active on social media. I, I, we would have a, like a, an, an average uh, list of all of them. And I would just send them an email or an email on LinkedIn or a message, an inbox uh, uh, to the in inbox on Instagram and stuff and just see how they respond and uh, like chat with them and to and to like share with them how our product can help them. And um, so far it has, that strategy has got us, uh, oh, and another strategy is that we just look around us to see uh, if there are anyone around, around us that may need this product. Uh, for example, uh, um, I reached to some uh, venue departments uh, to and, and propose some ideas for them to uh, better their performance. And now um, I'm in currently in negotiation with two departments from Vinuni. Uh, I'm also I also have been successful in uh, selling Snap to you <laughs> to to help you to start uh, producing content on your uh, social media accounts. Absolutely, and I'm uh, thrilled to be a, a client of yours. I mean, I thought what you've developed is just so smart and so efficient uh, that I'm uh, super excited about working with you on this. On your operations, do you run virtually? You don't have an office, right? Yeah, uh, we didn't have an office. Do you ever see yourself having an office or do you think it's more efficient to run virtually? And if so, how do you build a, cor a corporate culture when you're running virtually and people aren't seeing each other in person every day? Yeah, uh, I would say uh, for us, uh, we still think uh, working in person is the best. And uh, uh, though we didn't have, uh, we, uh, for now we couldn't afford uh, an office yet, but we, we, we utilize the free space, our uh, free workspace on Vinuni together, all three uh, co-founders of my startup. to we, we come here and work every day. So uh, technically uh, me and my co-founders see each other every day and work together. So uh, we can be very responsive with any task uh, that's, uh, as, uh, that we need to address. Uh, however, for my two other employees, they are not in Hanoi. So uh, it's hard for, uh, so it's impossible for, for them to come to work with us. That's why we have to run, like operate uh, the team with them virtually. Um, as I think it's, it's pretty hard uh, to run virtually efficiently, but the way we have been trying to do to to do that is to be very uh, result oriented with um, all these two employees. So because we couldn't, we we are not sure like what are they doing, like how um, how are they spending their time and all that all that stuff. What we are doing is that every day we will set up a like. Mm, you know, uh, like day daily stand up, have a quick daily stand up with them to set up the priorities for the day, uh, what they need, need to do for today. And at the end of the day, we will check back on them to see their progress. And we are, so we, yeah, so we have some, um, that there are some key results that they need to accomplish at the end of the day. And we will check back on that. So that's how we uh, we are working with uh, running virtually with our two teams, uh, two team members. Um, but uh, for the like the like the key operations of our startup uh, are still being done in person by my uh, with my two co-founders. What's the hardest part about being in a partnership with someone? Like, you know, many partnerships don't work out, but your partnership seems to be really thriving and, and you two seem to be very complimentary. So how do you make yeah. a par your partnership work and what do people need to think about when getting into a partnership? Yeah, I would say the first thing uh, that there are two things uh, that make a partnership work. The first thing is that to be very straightforward and honest, so, for example, if you are recognizing anything, any like anything that your partner isn't doing well uh, or stuff, you you need to tell them straight away. Don't keep it to yourself. And uh, so that's the the one uh, quality: being very straightforward and honest with what you're thinking, uh, being open to share. 
and the second thing is that you need to uh how to say you 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 need to be open to learn right be open minded like uh to be honest that was a mistake of mine when i first uh started the uh, speak lab i was pretty overconfident about myself to be honest because you know i have shared with you i had a pretty good background i was I have always been the best student in the class. I have started um, a few um, clubs and uh, programs. Uh, I, I have like been the leader for those programs and they have achieved great results as well. That's why when I joined, well, when I started Speak Loud, I thought that I would do well. Uh, and and I, I was a bit, a little bit like um, uh, conservative uh, on when talking, uh, when my, when my co-founders um, share with me what they are, what they're thinking, but now uh, I have realized that uh, I still have a lot more things to learn and to improve, and I'm way I'm a lot more open uh, to their criticism and feedback now. So so the way we have been uh, making our partnerships work is that first very be being very straightforward like just share whatever we are thinking about each other or about the team right now. Uh, don't hide or don't try to sugarcoat anything. And the second thing is that be open to learn, be open to learn and also be open to, uh, to uh, you know, to the failures and the, like the hard, the hard conversations, you know, when, when you work uh, in business, there would be a lot of times you have to have hard conversations about how uh, like firing someone or, uh, stopping uh, like uh, or shutting down something and stuff and if we are like uh, we try, try to shy away from those conversations then the partnerships just cannot like work out well so that's how that's how you make that uh, partnership work life's lessons right yeah. how do you manage yeah. to be so resilient I mean I think as an entrepreneur you have to have a very high degree of resiliency because you experience a lot of failure, no matter how smart you are, right? So how do you make yourself more resilient? Seems like your whole life has been required to be very resilient. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I think I have an advantage is that when when, when I started my, my startups, the advantage to, to me is that I have encountered a lot of challenges when I was young. So I, I I had to train my resilience over time right? and and my and like resilience i would say is my strength i didn't i didn't fear uh challenges you know uh when i was uh, young uh like i remember in my primary school i joined a lot of competitions and uh and like for five years of primary school i joined i would say hundreds of competitions and i got no awards but but I, i'm still i was still very excited to join any committee or competition if i had the opportunity and 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 uh and because of how resilient i was eventually and uh, when i when i was in my in grade five i still managed to get the first prize of a, a mass uh mass competition of my, my my city and like that that was the first um experience of how of i see like of seeing how my efforts eventually will pay off, pay off for me if I'm resilient enough. And uh, things also, uh, similar things also happen uh, along the way. Like, uh, for example, when I self-learned English, it was very tough at first. I cried a lot of time because I, I'm not, I wasn't sure um, when when my, my English skills would improve. Uh, but eventually I still um, got better at English and, um, and yeah, I think that's that's the that's how that's how like at when I I started my startup, I have already been equipped with that kind of resilience. So like facing challenges is the normal thing for me. I have been facing challenges all the time. So so yeah, so uh, it's um so I I I always have that uh I would say bonus that if a challenge or a problem arises it's a normal thing uh, or, or failure happens it's a totally so, normal thing and 
Yeah. So we have a, we have one question here, and we're almost uh, out of time. So let's uh, a question from the audience: How do you enhance social networking? And I mean to keep people who are beneficial for your jobs alongside with you. Good question. Yeah. Uh, yeah very good question. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, I struggle um, with uh, social networking at first uh, because you know. For example, my first uh, employees at uh, Speak Lab, I have uh, told you that I, uh, I, I hired them at first, but then I laid them off because I, I felt like they weren't the right uh, fit for the team. Uh, so, uh, and later it was very hard to keep uh, a normal relationship with those people like it uh, it used to be pretty awkward when I met these people but eventually I think I have learned uh, that I, I have learned to um, you know separate uh, uh, separate uh, uh, business relationships with uh, personal relationships yeah yeah for example with it can be the same person like for example the same person can be a co-founder in my business and be my friend um and and uh for the the reason uh, the uh, like the the way how i can make it work out uh, i couldn't make it work out for some people but i think it uh but uh for certain people the way we have been able to make it work out is that is for a two-way effort like for me i'm I, I try to be very open to them and i didn't like um, uh, shy away from them uh, when i met them I, I still say hi and stuff uh, um, and my partner on the other hand they also very uh, they are also very clear uh, about the boundary so even if we have an argument in our business about something like when, when we step out of that conference room like when when we step out of that meeting we will still treat each other with respect and with like just like friends and we still go to dinner with each other and stuff and i i would say that would uh, that needs to be a to a two-way effort like we try and they also have to try to keep the relationships going if they if one of us didn't try, then it's it's hard to uh, to to maintain the the relationship. Uh, yeah, so that's that's that would be my answer. Well, I want to say, Tam, you're so inspirational, and thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. And we're going to be looking forward to following you, and I'm of course going to be looking forward to working with you uh, in the, in our current uh, partnership. Uh, with um, the work you're doing for me to help promote the Best Business Minds Awards and some of the other things that I'm doing. So I'm very excited uh, to uh, work with you. And again, it was a fabulous interview. Thank you for taking the time. Yeah, thank you Bye. for having me. And thank you, you all for attending. Bye, everybody. Have a great rest of your day. Yeah, goodbye, everyone.